Okay, so welcome to the sixth free summit working session. So this is where we basically try to figure out what we're going to do at the summit. And this session is going to be focusing on worldly maps and threat modeling. So let me share my screen and you should be able to see this presentation. Can you guys see the presentation? Yeah. Cool. Right. So um, I'm going to fly through this because we've done this before, you know, uh, so the summit is a place you can come and collaborate, you know, it's a very it's a unique environment maximized for collaboration. This is the sixth edition now all online. Uh, you know, it's all about working together to create some great outcomes. People love it. And, uh, and the way it works, it's all about working sessions. So we collaborate. We also can do some user sessions the more, you know, hands on practical stuff. Uh, we kind of have this idea of organizers, practitioners, and participants. You know, actually, a lot of individuals will, will change roles depending on a topic. You know what? And this is kind of very important. I want to stress this, right? You should be creating sessions for topics that you care about, right? Like, the, that's the beauty of the summit, right? The beauty of the summit is that you care about something. The summit has the ability to attract not just practitioners and, and people that are passionate about that topic, but also you know, the cross-pollination of other industries and other sectors and other talents and other types of professionals where you create some very unique environments uh, for this. And I really want, I, can, I think this year, for us to focus on a lot of those, that intersection between the multiple practices, because I think that's when real progress occurs, right? So we don't just talk to the echo chamber and talk about something that we all agree, but let's, let's really bring multiple disciplines together. So it's very important that you think, I care about this topic, let me create a bunch of sessions around it. And it's going to be a bit Darwinian, right? You know, if you, a lot of people want to have and talk about a session, we run them. If they don't, they don't, right? Again, you have nothing to lose, right? And actually with the virtual, we have an elasticity of sessions and an environment because we don't have any room limitations on rooms and times, et cetera, right? It's whether people can make it. So 100% online. Um, so we got the, you know, this kind of key, key kind of timings of, two blocks of, 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 um, of working sessions, which we're going to replicate in the training. Um, we start to put some ideas on the tracks we do. So we, you know, we, we charge a little bit for the tickets, although, because we want to recover some of the costs, because we have, you know, we got some technical writers already, and we're going to have all the Zoom and all that kind of stuff costs. Um, but, you know, there's plenty of tickets, right? So my view is that if anybody wants to come to the summit and can pay the 50 quid, you know, we'll get them a ticket either from one of the sponsors like Glasswall, or actually uh, I made a call that we you know, basically we're gonna uh, give free tickets to every single OWASP member and also other organizations like, for example, the Ladies of Hacking Society, right? So the point here is that the more talent we can get to the summit, uh, the better, right? So where are we now? This is kind of the uh, really the time to define the topics for you know the working sessions that we're working on. You know what we what I'll, kind of we want to do today on this session is review the training and main summit schedule because we actually have a schedule. A first pass, which is kind of quite interesting because this is usually we, we finalize the schedule a couple of days before the last summit. Um, although there's usually an idea of where things go, but I think this year we want to lock down some of these sessions. We want to start thinking about who can do session organizers and what are the topics we could cover. So the, the key topics always to ask the key question is if we get some of the world experts in worldly mapping right in the same virtual room, all focus on collaboration, all focus with openness, all focus to share. And this is actually very important which is everything at the summit is open and actually this year is recorded, right? And I think this is a very important thing. It's a little bit of a barrier to entry because there's some individuals or companies or participants that prefer to do things in Charlton House or closed doors. So I would say that's not the summit. The point of the summit is everything is open, everything is transparent, everything is recorded. So we can share and we can learn and we can collaborate, right? And then if you look at thread modeling, you know, if once you get, you know, the world experts in threat modeling, you know, what should we collaborate? What should we do? How can, you know, how can we move the needle forward? So the, this year, you know, we, we kind of going to do something that I, I also, also, I always wanted, which is a lot of pre-summit activity. And I think this year we actually can be able to formalize it. So we, we kind of now zooming in on this idea that in the weeks, the two weeks before the summit, in the first to the 12th, we want to do a whole number of training session, hacking session, and actually defense sessions. So they are a little bit different. They're very hands-on. They, they, they can be a bit led, you know, but the idea is to really expose the participants to all sorts of topics, right? And it's the same kind of model, 50 create for everything, 
you need a ticket, we'll get you a ticket. But the idea is that we want to do as many topics and then see what is the interest out there. So let's look at what that could look like, right? So we also kind of have this idea of the chilies, which is kind of the, one of the summits last, one of the sessions last week, you know, we're saying that we should provide a little bit of a, you know, the level of, of, of advanced or intermediate. So this is the idea of the schedule of the training session. So this is supposed to be very hands-on, you know, like for, for you know, somebody from, from beginners or for, you know, or for some, actually some advanced things. But the idea is to cover, you know, in a more relaxed way, some of these topics. So if you go kind of, for example, on Monday, we want to introduce team, team topologies, which is one of the things that comes from the code. And this is important because there's a session, and there's a really cool session already on the, on the summit schedule where we're going to try to intersect teams to policies, worldly maps, and squads, and, and tribes. So it's important that some of these concepts are known. So on the thread modeling, and for the crowd that is here for the thread modeling, um, I really want to add a lot more to this. And you'll see in the next day what will happen with thread modeling. The idea of this, and we did that at the last summit, and it was very popular, but we did it kind of, we shoved it in the morning, early morning, and, and other times where we had this like intro to thread modeling. And I feel that what would be absolutely fascinating was actually get some intro to threat modeling then by so even the multiple flavors of the individuals because unfortunately threat modeling is still more art than science at the moment which actually means that if i do a session and if avid does a session and if they you know if um you know other you know tony does a session and you know multiple players do a session you know ironically you know they're all probably a little bit different right but the I think there's, there's still a lot of commonality amongst them. And the idea here is all these sessions shouldn't be a lot of work for the, for the organizer. It's like, you know, you basically do a, a half an hour kind of intro to the thing and then you, you, you do some practical exercises. So, so you can see here that we're kind of playing around with the idea. So for example, you can have an intro to a juice shop and then a more advanced session on a juice shop. I think you can see my mouse, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's the blue and the gray significance? Um, the blue is we already have somebody to do it. And the gray was looking for somebody to do it. Great. So, and, and this, is, this is like everything, right? Like you can literally pick a topic that you really care about. So for example, Abbas, I think you should do a couple of sessions on Office 365 security, right? Because he spends a lot of time on it. And I yeah. think it's a really cool topic, right? That, you yeah. know, we spend a lot of time trying to lock down, right? Office 365 yeah. and, and our, 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 if, even our Azure environment, right? Yeah. And that's a great session that we can do, right? Uh, around that. So- I'm up for it. And, uh, and also, like, remember that the best way to learn is to teach, right? So again, this is your opportunity to, to kind of, you know, do a bit of teaching and, uh, and reach out. So you can see that even on some of these topics, Azure security, AWS security, we should be expanding this quite heavily. The, the, the idea at the moment, and I think this will expand into actually separate things, but the idea at the moment is we have the more traditional trainings in the kind of morning, day, 11 to 3, 11 to 1, 2 to 4, and then the kind of the hacking and defend sessions, so I think it would be really cool to do a bunch of hacking sessions, but also to do a number of defense sessions. I don't, I don't know if you remember that, there was a really cool OS conference that we, uh, we helped to organize to defend the flag. And I thought that was really, really cool, right? And I think if you look at it from a security point of view, I think, you know, there's, you know, I, I'm the first one to say, you should all learn how to hack and learn how to break everything because, you know, you learn something and you think differently, but, I, but some, you know, some individuals would also find a passion for, for fixing things. And actually fixing is harder than breaking, right? So I think it would be really cool to actually take some situations and say, hey, can we fix this app? Can we fix this? And that it will be very interesting, again, from a thread modeling point of view, to, to do a thread modeling before and after and, and all that jazz, right? And then you can see here, we already have a, somebody who done some really cool analysis of COVID apps. And one of the topics we want to do is to do a bunch of thread modeling and also hacking and security reviews of existing COVID-19 applications. Because those are applications that, in a way, they, they're really happening now. There's a lot of debate about the best way to do it. There's a huge amount of security implications, right, about what they're doing. They really all should be open. They should all be open sourced. And it's, it's one of those where, you know, most of it should actually happen in a transparent way. And I think we can facilitate that. And it would be amazing if we could actually come out of this and, and, and the summit help to recommend and, and make some of those apps more secure, right, which would be quite spectacular. And Dennis, I had a suggestion, which was, I don't know if we can get Simon to, to kind of do his worldly mapping. He's always talking about uh, the boy um, OODA loop and um, the Sun Tzu stuff. 
but to actually look at some of those if you've got a kind of a war game session to observe yeah. that and see how that actually you know maybe we could get people to do that strategy beforehand and then then read back it afterwards because i think that's the the problem you've got with that that um broadly mapping and the ooda stuff is putting it into reality and if you could actually um uh, do that before you do the exercise and then review it afterwards. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, look, I, I, the thing about always the summit is that the more preparation you have before a session and the better it becomes, right? So, so I, I, I feel that what we can actually probably do is create materials here so that when we have the practical session with, uh, with Simon, we actually can leverage his expertise. Yeah. Right? So we could say, hey, we tried to do this, we tried to do that, or here's the raw material, here's the raw data, or here's the first pass at it. Yeah. And then, I, and I think that would be a very, very effective, right, uh, yeah. use of his time. And actually, I know there's individual time from the community, right, that have a lot of expertise on that. Great. So, so the, the glass wall thing here is because uh, we want to recommend and encourage companies to bring their own application and, and throw it to the kind of the, the gauntlet and say, hack away. So I'm doing that, right? You know, we got an SDK, we have a cloud provider. I want to see, you know, how they survive and how people can find, hopefully, you know, don't find a lot, but if they do, great, because it's better. You know, if the good guys find it, then the bad ones, right? So I've got I think we want to encourage. Um, Dennis, right? I've got I've got a couple of um, serious hackers who are potentially interested in doing a, um, a session for the or two for the uh, conference. Cool, absolutely. So the, the reason why we kind of went also to the to the um, to, to the Chili's, right, to the idea of of doing some more advanced ones is because look, for example, I, I would say I'm not really interested in going to a, an intro to pen testing, right? You know, I've been there, done that, right? You know, I. But I'll be very interesting to see what the new generation is doing, right? I'll be very interesting to see how does the, the, the really hardcore bug bounty guys, how, how does the more advanced you know, pen testers are doing today? How has the field moved on? But I think it will be very useful for somebody who's starting to also, I think the best will be they will understand that even the more experienced individual, they still struggle. They still get stuck sometimes on the same things. So I think it'd be very valuable from both elements but I feel that from some of these sessions, we should kind of set the bar to say, you know, some of these sessions will be hitting the ground running, right? You know, you kind of need to have a bit of expertise. So for example, like to do a thread modeling on the COVID app, like you, you can't do that if you've never done a thread modeling, right? So, you know, you, that, that's where you want the experienced thread modelers to come along, in fact, and show their different approaches, right? On it. And did you say you already have somebody to do that uh, COVID session? Do you have room for more? We need more. I'll tell, I'll tell you why. The, the uh, Israel Health uh, uh, Ministry, whoever it was, built a fantastically well done app, built trust, working with security experts. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had one of the uh, security people that reviewed the app uh, speak at OWASP Israel cool. uh, virtually. And he talked about the process and the, the privacy aspects and the trust building by open sourcing everything. I think it was really interesting as a case study. Is that those guys, DC 151? No, we're DC 973. Okay. So, yeah, well, please wait. I, I think that would be amazing if they, they could present also here, right? Because, so that's what that session is. This session here, my understanding is that it's a session where some individuals who have done similar analysis actually are presenting their findings and they're presenting how to think about. So absolutely, like if you reach out to them, right? Because the other thing that we should be doing here is we should be you know, almost be putting a nice stamp of approval of best practices, right? You know, if we come out of the summit and say, hey, if you're thinking about an app like this, this is our recommended, right? Uh, or here's what the Bring community as a consensus it. can agree on. Sorry? So I'll reach out and ask to join. Cool. So now on, and on day two, so what, what, what we also have is we already got the, the, a really cool platform that we're going to be able for DevSecOps platform. So those guys already want to run a bunch of sessions. And this is an interesting example where this is actually a vendor platform, but we, they're making it e open for the people on the summit. So it's a good synergies, right? Although we want to make sure very clear that this, for example, that's going to be a closed platform that, you know, some individuals, you know, are sharing. But I want to also have things like the OAS, you know, um, you know, some of the OAS tools, uh, Code Dojo, I think, what's the name of that thing where, um, you know, you have a, a bunch of really cool also DevSecOps tools that we should be running that in parallel too. And, and here, what you could see, and this is where hopefully some individuals on the, on the, on the call are going to step up a little bit, 
right? Is I really think that we should run like a, a daily intro to worthy maps. Yeah. Because I think it would be very helpful. I'll be happy to do that, Dennis. Definitely be. Cool. So which one? Yeah, me, me too. Um, no, no, I'm saying this is, this is delivering. Day. Sorry? This is delivering, yeah? Yeah, this is this delivering. It's delivering. So I've got I've got a couple of examples that I can run with, but certainly talk about. I mean, we worked with a lot of the the Wardley maps when I was with you at Photobox. So yeah. you know, absolutely happy to um, run with. So which that. days go? Um, pick a day. You know what? I'll make time for it. It's not a problem. All right, cool. And and Petra, you want to present too? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Rock and roll. Maybe on the one chili pepper ones, because uh, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so actually, I might see if I've got time to do so one as well. So um, uh, you get two chilies, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> By default. <laughs> Maybe right, so three I'm, chili. I'm putting Petra on Monday, go on Tuesday, Tony on Thursday. Yep, works for me. No problem. Friday might be better for me than Thursday. Friday, Thursday okay. Can get Friday. a bit busy. Cool. Sweet, and uh, that's great. And I and I'll I'll see if we can get a, a couple of other guys like Ben. I would love you know Ben. You guys know uh, who's also doing a bunch of stuff from Worldly Maps. And now, about Mario. Yeah, and Mario too. Yeah, correct. Now I have this. I didn't add here, but I have the same question of Fred Martin. Mario's my four chili. Yeah, Mario's four chilies. Yeah. And um, so. So I, I wanted to do also do the same thing for work, for thread modeling because I think thread modeling is also a really good uh, one that we, we we need some introductions. So who who from here on this week can can do like an hour, you know, half an hour introduction and maybe some practical stuff on thread modeling? Because I want to do the same thing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, in the second week. Yeah, on this week, on the eighth to twelfth of June. I'm happy to do again like a one chili pepper thing, um, like an intro. Cool. I'm I'm happy to to do something as well on one chili pepper, and on <laughs> Office three six five uh, security, it can be two chili peppers. It's fine. Three, yeah. three. <laughs> a three is okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the week before the actual summit, right? Yeah, this is the week before the summit. Yeah. Avid, can you do one? Not available that week. Okay. No I need Sorry. to check my availability that week, but I, I could definitely do something if I have got the time. I cool. just need to check my calendar. Cool. James, I'll put it for Wednesday and then you let me know. Okay. What's Wednesday? The yeah. 10th? The 10th, yeah. 8, 9, 10th. Okay. So you, Avid, you you muted. I think you were speaking, but we didn't hear it. I have no idea what I was saying. Okay. <laughs> cool. You know, what we're talking about like an, it's like an hour intro, right? Yeah. I, I, let, let me check my calendar. I'm going to try and free that up. Okay. Cool. Cool. I, should, I should be able to do that. Okay. I'll I'll put you one with two chilies on. Is they not? Yep, I'm I'm good for the tenth. Did you want any particular methodology or just general? No, I I, I think what, what actually I think is interesting is that you know I, I, you should be presenting the methodology that you're comfortable with, right? I think what we might, might do is maybe tweak. So for example, I know Tony has the pasta thing, right? Which I never know what it means, but it's it's actually pretty cool, right? But um, so you almost have different flavors of thread modeling. And I think it would be very powerful to even show that, right? You know, we can have multiple versions. You know, if we can even get someone like Michael Howard, right, to present his very version of, of thread modeling, that'll be that'll be awesome, right? And um, and we can no, get ask Steve. Sorry, ask uh, Mr. Wavy himself. Who's that? Sorry, Tony. Okay. You're missing. All right, so that's that. So, the, so you can see here the, the topics and, and I feel that we also want to add a, a, a bit of more OWASP things here because I think there's some amazing OWASP projects that it was worthwhile kind of uh, adding adding this. But, but you can see the ideas. I've that got we a deck of uh, cornucopia cards. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, I wonder if we can do a game on those cards. Oh, well, in that case, I've also got escalation of privilege and, of, uh, sorry, elevation of privilege and a few others. Can, you, I've, can I've we do that remotely? Can you think, could that work remotely? Um, ish. Let me have a think about it. There are platforms that could do it if I can get hold of the decks, which I are still available. It's just creating them. I saw recently, I don't know if it was posted about on, on, online, online uh, EOP. I thought that was the Android app that they did. No, that's it. Cool. Well, can, can you explore that? Because I think that would be really cool sessions to do, right? Yeah, I go looking for it. Yeah, there we go. Elevation of privilege on Android. E either way, it's easy enough to find something that can do dealing out cards and so on, I'm sure. So I'll have a look. Yeah, cool. Yeah, James, be, see if we can pull that off. That would be amazing. Okay. Yeah, for the ones who don't know, like, there's a really cool game that, you know, you basically get a bunch of cards and you, can, you, you, know, you, you put challenges and you play the cards. It's, it's, it's really cool. Right. Um, Got it. Cool. All right. Posted so that's the, the link in the chat. Sorry? Posted the link in the chat. Okay. Website play OP. So, so in terms of the schedule, first sort of draft, and we, and then, and actually, I'll, I'll be curious on your idea with, with which chili you prefer, this one or that one. <laughs> We actually did this in parallel. So, um, so, so at the moment, the, the current logic is that on Monday, we, you know, we kind of having the, um, you know, the intro. So we got a keynote sort of to launch the keynote, explain the rules, everything, how it goes. Then we kind of have the, the Simon Worley introduction that he mentioned about. And then so, so on the Worley map section, then we got the landscape and threads and moving from graphs to maps. Uh, session and then strategic and development and then real world worldly maps and then at the, by the evening we kind of do the thread mapping which is the idea of how to apply the social theory and the threads and, and how we can kind of map the whole thing so that's just taking the ideas that we talked about last week and try to apply them uh, here and remember that this is all it's still a bit Darwinian right like if you have new ideas new sessions we can put them up there right you know this is not final but it's a it's a first task right so then we got the 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 juice oh, sorry. Uh, the, the juice shop stuff happening in parallel, and I think there's some already some interesting tracks on on this on um, and then more advanced team topologies because I think Manuel could do that day. And then um, on uh, on Tuesday we've got uh, some some you know we got we moved that keynote to here uh, with the idea is to then you know we can do those how do I do it, but I really like those sessions. We need to kind of expand it a little bit, but it's the kind of how do I do it? In, in, and I think on thread modeling, I feel that we should do the same thing. I think we should do a number of sessions on thread modeling where literally individuals, you know, have five minutes, they present how they do it. And then, you know, we have a talk about five or 10 minutes about you know, that. So I think that would be quite useful on some topics. So thread modeling is definitely one of those. And then we talk about mapping culture and then we you know, should explore the events, uh, example and secret implications of isolation and terrorism, one of the topics that we covered last week. And this is, this is that very interesting one, where is that intersection between, um, you know, team topologies, pioneer settlers and town planners. So, that's, so that should be T, sorry, <laughs> not B. Um, um, oh, do I have the, might as well change it here. Uh, yeah, so that should be town planners. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> and then, you know, the, the squads and tribes, and then the idea is we do the risk mapping kind of uh, at, at evening. So from a, from a worldly maps point of view, any comments on this? So the threat modeling, the risk mapping, they tie together, really, don't they? Which is kind of yeah. obviously, um, and is there a session anywhere about risk valuation in here or where would that fit? Well, I think that should fall in here, right? Yeah. Because maybe we should, we should put about... in there risk valuation because, you know, we, we, we had a session about that last year, but just, because rather making it actually concrete value rather than um, red, green, amber, which is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Cool. 
Risk on the Schofields range. Sorry? Risk <laughs> on the Schofield range. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the Scoville? <laughs> so, yeah, Scoville range. Yeah. Yeah. Philip Schofield. And, um, yeah, and, and I think those, those are the, those sessions where, you know, it could be quite interesting to have the intersection between the multiple cultures, right? And yeah. um, cool. So now on DevSecOps, right, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we talk about DevSecOps, how could This is a good example. The first one needs kind of a better topic, needs a better um, uh, name, but, uh, but you can see what we can leverage for, for that move. Um, there's the idea of, you know, secure pro coding practices in fast and performance. So this is where it becomes quite critical. Like, you know, if you want to do this, you know, we have to do it at speed. And then, you know, some of the business case for DepSecOps and how to get agile and security. So these are really cool topics, right? Um, and this has actually been proposed, um, which is, which I think is quite exciting because this is CodeQL, if I'm not wrong, is a whole uh, GitHub, um, you know, engine to analyze code. I think this is, you know, it's quite spectacular, right? We really, I really want uh, to see the power of this and how that works. And then the, the uh, OASP SAM software assurance maturity model, they're gonna define a bunch of working sessions that we have here. And by the way, we will have probably more tracks, but this again, this is the first good pass at it. Uh, on, on, the, on the Wednesday, then we've got the, um, the sort of the, the some CISO track stuff. Uh, we, Jane said she was happy to do a keynote, so we kind of put her on Tuesday. So Wednesday still to confirm. Um, and then some CISO stuff and third party assurance. I think we talk about this. And then a Netflix kind of party at the, at the, uh, at the evening um, with some social stuff. And then we got the cloud security where it's some hardening of AWS. And, uh, and, and this, is, this is one that we care a lot about for the, the Glasswall crowd, right? How to handle malicious content inside AWS Lambdas. And then, you know, how to provision cloud platforms securely and then some chaos engineering. Um, so that's Wednesday. And then on, on Thursday, we, that's where we got put some of the thread modeling. So this is that we had a couple of thread modeling sessions um, for, for this. And, uh, and also like the migration, you know, the cloud stuff. So we got one track on clouds. Uh, ben, these are your multi-cloud governance right. uh, stuff and multi-cloud compliance kind of as code connected to it. And then again, uh, how do I do it uh, for multiple teams to actually present how they actually do cloud security. And then we kind of end on that one, the multi-cloud security patterns. And then on the thread modeling, we got the privacy with Lindum, some cloud-based thread models. I think it would also be quite cool to, to do a thread model on Zoom and remote working practices. And this might be a perfect example of something that would be better if we had that session or a couple of attempts of doing that during the training week, because then we actually um, you know, have the material to present here, right? To maybe a wider audience. And the same thing for the COVID thread model. So the idea would be that if we can have the materials created originally, we can then present them here. And then on risk management, we got some standards, open source policies, and also that the, the Phil Hogan's Open Information Security Risk Universe, um, which you, so this is an interesting one because I think this might conflict with that one. So we'll, we'll see, um, you know, although that's cloud security, right? So we'll, we'll see how it goes. And um, the, the yeah. risk management side of it, I think we're probably missing something around what is risk? How do we quantify it? What does it actually mean? Because you know, if you've got people that are joining and, you know, we're, we're assuming that people are risk experts or know what risk means. I think it might be useful having a session that just breaks it down in, in, in layman's terms or just makes it simple for, for technical people. Because that's one of the challenges that I've come across where I am, right? Yeah. They don't, don't even know what it means. Yeah. Um, I can, on, when I'm doing the threat modeling introduction, I can do a brief thing about risk and uh, vulnerabilities because it's all kind of part of yep. like you need to know about risk and vulnerability if you want to know about threat modeling so i'm happy to include it in my bit where i do a little intro the week before on the threat or at least modeling. A, like a one chilly intro session could be done i guess yeah i mean that, it, you know you can, you can you can elaborate on it but i think it's just a really good way of just um just helping the context of the rest of the day, especially around risk, because you can we can talk about you know rise right uh, up front at the beginning of the day. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it, it's quite a massive topic, right? Because especially if we can get some also heavyweight individual involved, but also you know some some new you know, entry to the party, right? You know, I always find that risk should be the common language, and yeah. if we can find a good way to present risk in a way that multiple parties agree on, then you know we, we don't have that common language. And everything in security comes down to a risk situation, right? 
Yeah. yeah Phil, Phil and I did a session last year that went through that um, measurement stuff and simulation. Cool. Yep. Yeah. So I'll, I'll add you to that one too, Ben. Thank you. Because there were some kind of business refugees um, last year who were uh, kind of clustered around that and talked about it. But it'd be good to not just uh, um, not just the, the for the technical crowd, but there are people who are coming into this who are kind of have a more of a business aim. To yep. It. Well, it's super powerful when when you start talking about risk and you can say well, actually risk is a, is a is a language that anyone can speak that allows the top to speak to the bottom. To the people yep. on the ground and that, i think that's the powerful story behind that and that's where if you can get that it gives you that voice where normally technical people on the ground don't get the voice because they, they're just delivering what's being asked of them rather than saying actually i'm going to flag this as a risk and it becomes really really um super powerful then because all of a sudden there is that buy and then you start getting the visibility you need and you can tie the budget you're asking for to the value of the risk Absolutely. You start tying it to business and business makes the decision, but ultimately the, the, the person on the ground doesn't have to take that responsibility, which is normally what happens. Yeah. Actually, there's, there's been a great tweeted thread uh, on uh, which this guy started this conversation, which I actually I should add here, which is um, about this risk budget, um, which kind of, I think, um, came down to the um, you know, very inspired by, if you look at the SRE, the SRE have a budget, right? Um, but I think the risk budget is, I have to say that I'm, it really hit me the concept because I always find that the, the problem with risk appetite is that it, you don't measure and it doesn't have a, a quantification where a budget, you can say, you know, a team has a certain budget for risk, right? They can, they can use that budget on vulnerabilities, on uh on on insecure practices because where they are right in in the landscape where other you know parts of the of the company or, or parts of the application they're going to have a much lower risk budget because the side effects or the assets that they have are that more problematic yeah absolutely but, but i also think it's worth putting in that this is just one of the risks in the risk register for the whole company and so if you've got a hedging financial hedging risk there's a very quantifiable number of about that when you get to the, the cyber risks, they shouldn't be kind of red, amber, green. They should be, you know, a dollar amount because uh, then then yeah. you can spend money against them, which is what you do a, with the financial hedge. Yep, absolutely. The other cool thing about budget is that unlike appetite, you can break it up. It's not about the total amount of risk. It's that okay, you want to take a little bit more risk, then you need to stop, you need to uh, fix something else. You remove some other risk, and you have to add to that budget to be able to allocate accordingly. And the point is that you want them to be able to invest that limited amount of risk to be able to get whatever. And, uh, and I think the other big thing to talk about is um, uh, budget versus actuals. So in a, in a, in a, a p and there's always budget versus actuals. Um, with a, when you're putting a risk register together, people should call a risk out, agree it with the business, and then uh, measure whether that actually was crystallized or not. Because that's what, that's what an insurance uh, you know, actuarial process does. They go back and... Uh, work out how that's changing uh, and it also helps you calibrate your estimates because it, uh, otherwise it's the the CISO is just a cutout views you know am I, am I safe or not safe and it's um you want it to be less binary than that more nuanced yeah it's, it's the risk actually coming to life it's the risk actually happening the yeah. quantifiable cost of that versus actually what you could have spent to fix it having that that metric would be and that, it, if you look at threats coming in from an ISAC, you know, uh, you get a whole load of, of posts, a uh, big volume of noise. What is, is, you know, is this a back to your chili peppers? Is this a big one or not? But, you know, it's going to vary on, vary on what you are, but having some sort of financial qual uh, quantification quite early on when those risks come in. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. Go on mute, Dennis. Cool. Yeah, I think that that'll be quite quite a nice one. Cool. So that's uh, and this is on Wednesday, and then uh, hopefully we can agree on a movie and we can have a big Netflix party or something similar to that uh, on that one. Um, so on uh, on th on Thursday, yeah, sorry, on um, on yeah, on Thursday we got those things that we're talking about the um, the, um, the cloud-based threat models and the privacy. So. Avid, any comments on, on these sessions on the threat modeling? 
got just one question. The COVID up threat modeling, this is already covered by somebody, right? Uh, not really. All right. Yeah, well, we have first week. We have that. All right. Well, if, if I can help here, um, been actually publishing some threat models of COVID apps. Um, so you can, you can put me in there. Cool. So, so I, I think what will be very valuable here will be to also collect and, and, and bring a lot of the materials created on the previous week. Because some of this stuff is actually quite complex, right? So if you, if you think about it, right, it, it will take time just to review a thread model of a copy app, right? True. To, to start from scratch is, is going to be insane. You don't have the time where I think these sessions here are all sessions that you kind of have to bring some materials to the table for us to be very productive. Right, yep. Um, so, so like before, so before the actual summit, is there a like a specific pre-working session on specifically COVID out threat modeling or like, should we organize one? Yeah, so that's, that's the ones that we were talking um, to do here. Sorry, those sessions here, can you see that? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, here. Okay. Okay, now I got it. Okay. Good. So, so uh, yeah. And we like, can do more, right? Like, literally, we can do as many as you guys can do, right? You know, like, literally, this is, it's, uh, it's just a, a placeholder, right? It, it, it's all, I think a lot of this is all about, is there somebody online that is almost going through the steps and, and helping others who are trying to do it? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, um. I'm in for that one for the threat modeling for the COVID apps. Um, and I can bring already a threat model that I built for the, uh, for the COVID app I built. Great. Yeah, look, the logic of this is I find that the more we share, right? And, and remember that we have Slack channels, we, we, have, we can create working sessions or, or, or hangouts, or, or Zoom sessions, as many of you guys need. We, we have the, the, you know, we can collaborate. We have a GitHub repo to put the materials. So, you know, view the summit as a kind of facilitator, right, of a lot of these materials and, and this getting together. Cool. Cool. Oh, yeah, where were we? Yeah, cool. Yeah, so there's a thread modeling. Yeah, so, so these sessions, you know, they, they become really powerful if, if we can bring a lot of materials to the table. Any comments on it? Is that talking about threat modeling the actual Zoom app? Or how did you threat model over Zoom? Ooh. Now that's a very interesting topic. Collaborative thread modeling. Ah, okay. Yeah. No, I, I actually, I wasn't thinking about that. I was actually thinking about actually thread modeling Zoom and, and, the, and the side effects and, you know, and the remote working practices, right? But actually, a session on how to do thread modeling in a virtual world, I think that would be very interesting. Yeah, punctuation there wasn't clear. <laughs> threat modeling, Zoom and remote working practices is what you meant, as opposed to threat modeling on, on Zoom and remote working practices. Uh, Seba actually gave a great session on that a couple of weeks ago, right before the OS uh, virtual training. Uh, on which one? Which one of those? Um, um, threat modeling in a, re, uh, in a remote environment. Cool. Oh, in. As in using um, like one person drives, done, uh, putting things on the, the, the shared screen and everyone discusses yeah. through the threat modeling? Yeah, basically that. I mean, if you think about, we always say threat modeling, you want to be in the same room, take turns up at the whiteboard, have a conversation around a round table, it doesn't work. So well remotely. So you, you had some tips uh, uh, around that. Um, yeah, t Teams whiteboard. Yeah, like yeah, I mean it can be done, but I. <laughs> yeah, not great. <laughs> uh, anyway, if we do that, we should get set up to join. I think that'd be really, really powerful, right? I'm I'm actually tempted, of you know moving that almost Same thing. to the evening and then we'll, we'll, we'll let them bottle it up 
And I think here, you know, thread modeling in a collaborative, um, in a virtual environment, right? Just, uh, just for your information, I'm doing this old school on the whiteboard and I actually just realized I've got the COVID up thread model here. <laughs> there you go. Actually, I've actually seen a really good setup where uh, one of the guys I was talking to a couple of days ago, he had two cameras. Obviously, the one he faces for talking to, but he has a second one set up facing a whiteboard he's got on his office wall at home. That's so what he can I switch between the two, yeah. That's what but, I do for threat modeling trainings. But look, if you, if you look at, you know, this map from Simon, right? Which, you know, by the way, we saw it was pretty cool. So we published this three minute video that just has that bit. You know, which basically becomes a really cool masterclass. So for me, the, 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 big, the big thing I took from this, which applies to this too, right? And you can do the same thing for threat modeling, right? So we always said that threat modeling had to be done where you need on-site. So you need the on-site physical space to do threat modeling. The, the problem with that is that it means it doesn't scale, right? So we always struggle to scale threat modeling because you have to get the, the right people in the same room and that can be really hard to do. So actually, to be able to do thread modeling in, in the new world, right? Where you actually look at, you know, you know what, what we need to figure out is basically is these new emerging practices, right? What are the emerging practices that we need to move from this kind of ad hoc, not very well mature to a very mature way, eventually even commoditized. But if we can move the emerging, emerging practice of doing a thread model to a much better workflow, that would be a great success story, right? And that will allow a lot more value to be driven. In fact, it will allow a whole new business to emerge called remote thread modeling, right? Where at the moment that market doesn't exist. And actually there's a huge demand for it because thread modeling today is still a very specialized skill. There's not that many people in the world that can really do very good thread models. And actually day to day don't have a business model to actually you know, sell that or, or be involved in a lot of those because we still rely on a lot of you know, manual practices. And not to say that, you know, the whiteboard is not the best way to do it. I, I still like the whiteboard, but I think we need to figure out how to mix the whiteboard with a digital version and then scale that up so that, you know, I, I, my view on thread models is that it has to be a gigantic graph, right? You need to be connecting the dots in the graph. So you start with what you know, and then you start adding the abuse cases. But I think that's a perfect example. Uh, Jacob, don't get insulted, but it was really hard to see anything on your board. And we tried this last year at last year's summit. I was remote, and you know, doing that a whiteboard with a webcam. I, I don't have the right words to say how badly it sucks. <laughs> so I totally agree with you. There's definitely opportunities there. Definitely worth discussing. So I've done some spectacular thread modelings where we're using dot language, and, and there was a variation of it, and where, where literally you were typing in as the individual said how it works, and you actually saw a representation of that graph. And that was amazing because you can actually almost start to see. And, and, and then when somebody says, oh, by the way, this happens, the problem with the whiteboard is that it becomes a mess, right? Like in a way, the problem with the physical drawing, it becomes a work of art where actually what you want is you want almost multiple layers of the thread model and you want to have thread models that cover or even in patterns, right? But the only way you can do that is if the data is in the graph format so you can choose what bits you want to see. And, but I think that this our, our opportunity here is also to help to define those emerging practices of how to do thread modeling remotely in an effective way. I think that would yeah, be a the, really the thing cool is, thing. Yeah, the thing is, if, if on a live session b before the virus, if, if you did it on the whiteboard, then doing it on a whiteboard but on the camera seems to be good. So, so to be honest, what, what I think will happen, right, and is you know, if you look at again on, on the evolution of this from a mapping point of view, I feel that the physical sessions that we're going to do in the future are going to be very different. I, 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 my prediction is that, we will, that we're going to get so much value from the virtual participation and from the fact that we can now get subject matter experts. In fact, even, even in a more family friendly way, right? Now you can participate in sessions, you know, it almost becomes a case of which time zone does the thing sync up. But I think we, we really need to learn how to do events where the remote is not a second class citizen, right? Where, you know, maybe we introduce some attrition locally, but sometimes the problem with local sessions, it becomes too cavalier. So if we actually can do, find ways to, 
effectively do the on-site and the remote, I think you get even a best of both worlds. So I, I imagine, for example, next summit, where actually the, the remote participation is not going to be like, you know, Avid was saying, you know, I know that it kind of sucked in the past. And, and the problem is we didn't have enough good practices and enough good setup to make that work. And I, I think what we want to learn this year is how to make that work so that next year, when we combine the, virt the physical with the virtual, you know, maybe even you have local physical, right? You, maybe you go to a local place and four or five of you get together and then we almost collaborate in these clusters. But I think we, we want to learn this year how to effectively run these sessions remotely, i.e. virtually. Cool. Yeah, cool. All right, so um, let's now, uh, yeah, so this is the, the, the Thursday and then on Friday, we've got you know, some compliance as code, some OAS projects, and, uh, and some ASVS. So you know, hopefully we'll get a bunch of good tracks here on SVS and, uh, and some stuff that we kind of stuck today on miscellaneous. So, and then, you know, we probably want to figure, finish off with a nice social thing. Cool. Any other comments on the schedule so far? So we want to publish this on, uh, on both the o uh, Open Security Summit website, but also on the Hay Summit. So, you know, ideally from a couple of days from now, you will you'll be able to start to register uh, your interest on the sessions the same way that you registered to participate on this one. Hey, did I? She's here. Hello. She deserves all the credits for these slides. She did an amazing work on this. It's it's thanks to all the community. Um, you guys came up with the sessions. Cool. Right. Um, sorry. Any other comments? Did we get any new people to assign their names to any sessions? Yeah, I, cool. got, I got some notes and, um, and we go also we got the recording. So, you know, people on the record now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, cool, right. So uh, yeah, next steps is, you know, we want to keep working on the content, uh, work on the kind of beginning of the training materials. And also, again, figure out who needs to be invited, right? Like who should we be reaching out to, especially once we now have the, 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 the things more on the calendar, you know, we want to start to lock these things down, you know, figure out who are the key players that should be participating and hopefully gen generate a bit of you know, momentum, right? You know, say, hey, they, they are coming, you should come too and, um, and generate some energy around that. And then, uh, yeah, so we, I, I booked another session for this for threat modeling and worldly maps. So next Tuesday, a week from now, hopefully we'll then even have more clarity, we have a better understanding of, of how everything fits together. And I think it would be interesting to just to take a look at the summit schedule, just from a threat modeling point of view and from a world mapping point of view. So if all, all, all you care is about worldly maps, what does the summit look like? If all you care is about threat modeling, what does the summit kind of look like? And we should have a much better clarity on even the registrations and the interest and, and how everything fits together. And that's kind of it. Thanks for everybody. Any final yeah, comments? Yeah. Just a quick one. Ant's asking um, if uh, you want him to do a lightning talk or a uh, session or something. Ant Gillum. Yeah. Yeah, of course, man. He needs to do the gamification stuff, right? And uh, Yeah, all that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. And this is Ant Gillum. You know, we need to get, you know, he, yeah, he actually was really, you know, two sessions ago, he, he helped, he helped a lot. We did a lot of brain brainstorming on, on a lot of the sessions that we, we mapped out. So it was really cool. Yeah, we need to get him involved. Absolutely. Okay. I don't even know how to write his name, so <laughs> <laughs> some help needed there. Uh, I'll help you. Thank you. Cool. Well, you know, we this way we finish five minutes early. So well, everybody very goes. efficient. Very efficient. So thanks for joining, and uh, I might see you tomorrow. I might see you next week. All right. Thanks, Anna. Right. Thanks, thanks bye. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. bye. bye. Hello. So, Dennis, um, 